This video is sponsored by no one. The computer is reviewed, I purchased, and wanted to share my thoughts with you. I also wanted to say thank you to all who have recently subscribed. You have helped the channel grow faster than I thought, and I may need to prepare for my interviews sooner than later. These two mini PCs look similar and perform similar too. I found deals on them on different days, and actually thought I was buying something other than the one on the right, but that's what the order says. I had lots of tabs open that day, and I've since changed tactics some. On the left we have a B-Link U59 Pro, and on the right the B-Link Mini S. Both are powered by N5000 series Celeron processors, have 8GB of RAM, dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and Windows 11 preloaded. Included with the U59 Pro is the power adapter, Visa mount bracket, screws, a short and longer HDMI cables, a manual, as well as an extra SSD cable. The Mini S differed only that it didn't include the extra cable. Looking at the front, they both have a BIOS reset button, two USB 3.0 ports, and a power button, but the U59 also has a USB-C port. Along the back, there are more differences. They both have two additional USB 3 ports, dual HDMI, and 12 volt DC input. The U59 has dual gigabit NICs, while the Mini S only has one. The Mini S also has a spot for a Kensington lock, while that is absent on the U59 Pro. The storage configuration is different too, with the U59 Pro having 500GB and the Mini S only 256. Both allow for expandable storage, with the ability to mount a 2.5 inch drive just inside the case. You access it by removing four screws on the bottom. The processors perform similarly but are also different. The Pro has the Celeron N5105, while the Mini S has the N5095A. Both are 4-core processors. I found both of these computers on Amazon on different days. The U59 Pro for $187 and the Mini S for $139. That is quite a bit more than what I have previously reviewed, but we are going from processors released in 2016 to ones that were released in 2021. That could lead to more computing power using less energy. Starting up Windows 11 wasn't an issue for either. Initial time on the included drives was low, which was a nice change, though there is still some evidence of other monitors being hooked up before mine. I reinstalled Windows 11 on both and ended up with a long list of items without drivers, yet nothing seemed impacted. Windows Update didn't work this time to fix that, so I went out to the B-Link site and pulled the driver pack, which was nearly 900 megabytes. I had to step through the driver installs one by one, but it auto-selected once I pointed it to the right folder. CPU-Z benchmarks had the U59 Pro at 226.5 single and 1034.4 multi-core, while the Mini S squeaked ahead at 268.1 and 1034.9. Cinebench R23 was a different story, with the U59 pulling ahead with 617 single and 2163 multi-core, and the Mini S achieving just shy of that with a 600 single and 2127 multi-core. Inside Linux, the Sysbench CPU benchmark again favored the Mini S, but barely. It scored 1793 single and 6932 multi-core while the U59 Pro came in with 1,791 single and 6,920 multi-core. Geekbench 5 scores again show the Mini S in the lead overall, with 696 single and 2,145 multi-core. The U59 Pro was right there with it though, with 697 single and 2,114 multi-core. The fact that one was tested under Debian and the other under Ubuntu could generate some slight variations, so there is virtually no difference in performance between the two systems. Here is a graph of how these stack up against the previously reviewed AK2 and AK34. YouTube playback on both was similar. My 4K 30fps sample played with no drop frames, while the 4K 60fps one did have some frame drops. Not as many as the previously reviewed machines, and it was almost watchable. Dropping to 1440 and 1080 showed reduction in drops, but not eliminated. So this shows that either machine will be good watching a full 30 frames per second 
full HD or 4K content. For gameplay, I did try out widescreen Super Mario World again, a great way to play this classic game. Both systems could maintain 60 FPS without issue. CPU utilization looked to be around 65% in Task Manager. A note if you're thinking of using Debian Linux. I needed to download RTL 8168H Tech 2 firmware from Debian and include it on the USB drive so I could have networking available during the install. I didn't have this issue with Ubuntu Server or Xbuntu Live. A quick teardown shows some internal differences as well as what not to do. The Mini S is first. It only has a single RAM slot populated with AZW's own brand. The internal SATA M.2 drive is also AZW, but a full 22 by 80 and would be easy to replace. The Wi-Fi card looks rather small and I don't know if it can even be removed. Taking the board out and the CPU cooler off, I can see the Realtek 8 111H network chip and that the battery is glued onto a chip pretty good. The U59 Pro comes with two SODIMM slots with only one populated with AZW RAM. Underneath the M.2 SATA drive is the Wi-Fi card which is removable but covered with what looks like a liquid electrical tape. Warning! This is where things for me went wrong. If you need to get to the CPU side you really should take out the Wi-Fi card and untape the antenna from the board. I didn't, and even though I was careful, I ended up ripping the wires out of the antennas. Underneath we see a similar blower and heat pipe setup. There are some differences, and putting it back together wasn't hard, but I wonder if I should go back at some point and replace their thermal paste, as it wasn't very malleable. Back together both machines still work. Power draw using Cinebench maxed out around 23 watts. Under Windows, the U59 Pro idled around 8 to 11 watts, with the Mini S coming in around a watt lower. I did more testing with the U59 under Linux, and with Ubuntu Server, I could get the idle power down to 5 watts, while it was 7 to 8 watts under Debian. I finally got it down that low under Debian too, using PowerTop and optimizing based on its findings. Max temperatures were gathered after they had been opened up, for whatever that is worth. With the room temperature around 19 degrees Celsius, the U59 Pro topped out at 83C while the Mini S topped out at 75. Another sign I might need to open them up again. The BIOS on both of these is impressive. So many options, it's no wonder there is a clear CMOS button on the front. There are timer events so you can have the machines wake up at certain times, but there is no setting for wake on LAN. The trick I found using ETH tool on my MSI motherboard works for this too. Overall pretty nice machines. At the time I found the listing for the U59 Pro on Amazon for $199 and a $12 coupon so I snagged it for $187. The Mini S I picked up with no coupon for $139. I have plans to use them as Linux machines and the U59 Pro could work as a PFSense router too. I've seen another reviewer use it as a media server, and for that either one of these would work pretty well. They would equally serve okay as basic Windows machines, though I think the ability to expand the memory to 16GB in the U59 Pro is a better bargain. That wraps up another video. If you like, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like content like this. I still have a few more mini PCs to review, and at least two of them I bought new for under $100. As long as I've bought no others, I'll have to decide what I should tackle next year after I move from Alaska and change careers. One thing will be putting all these to good use. Thanks again for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible. Included with the U59 Pro is the power adapter. Power adapter? Power adapter. Broke the antenna leads.